Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Kasim Al Rafi, and today we're continuing our training module series as part two out of four. This week we'll be talking about the Power Apps navigation or the iTrack 365 Hub navigation, where we'll talk about training, courses, training tasks, and a bit of QA. We'll go through a lot today, so if you haven't navigated to the Power Apps before, please look at our previous videos on our YouTube channel. So without further ado, let's begin. So once you navigate to the iTrack 365 Hub, on the left-hand sidebar, if you scroll all the way down to Forms, you can go into Training. And what this does is it changes the left-hand sidebar to go from those HSC iTrack Portal form settings down to Training, Training Tasks, Courses, and Exams, and so on. For the sake of today's webinar, we will just be going over Training, Training Tasks, and briefly into Courses. However, in the upcoming webinars, we will go deeper into job roles, course groups, exams, how to even add a course, and so on. So for today's webinar, we will just be going through um, the navigation of the, um, of the entities. So to begin, we will start by navigating training. On the left-hand side, you'll open up training records. From there, using the view on the top, you can switch from my active to maybe active. And then from there, you can see which employees have any active training per course and kind of per status, right? Should you need to close any of these trainings off, you can select on the left-hand side, hit deactivate, and you can change whether it was canceled, expired, or superseded. Okay. We can then open up a training record as well. And once we look at everything here, everything looks proper. We can hit this little down arrow, go from status reason unapproved to approved, which will also deactivate the record just in a more completed state rather than an expired canceled state. So those are your two methods of deactivating a course. Obviously, this should be done in the iTruck portal. However, should there be any bugs or any issues that are limiting you from doing this in the iTruck portal, the Power Apps is the place we can circumvent a lot of those issues. Next, we'll talk about training tasks and how those are set up and look in Power Apps. So by going into training tasks here, like I had same idea, go to the views, go into all training tasks. And then what you can see here is you'll see all the training tasks, whether they're closed or they're open. So if I know that I want to look at, for example, all the ones assigned to Diane, right? What it tells me here is this employee, Diane Fritz, has 90 training tasks. Some of them could be closed, as I mentioned, um, but this will just show me all of the tasks that she has finished. And then if I want to even search by which ones are still open, what I can do is I can go on the right hand side here from complete date, hit the down arrow, hit filter by, select on, scroll down to does not contain data. What this is saying is that if she has not completed the date of the training task yet, then please show it up in this view. Okay. From here, and this is part of our employee offboarding, we can do a couple things. We can select them all and delete if they're no longer with us. We can cancel them. Or if we need to assign these training tasks to another employee for whatever reason, we can assign these in this top ribbon up here as well. Okay. Once we open up a record even further, you can see the record status is completed. Um, so which is kind of a problem because if I do go back to here, the complete date was not finished up. So if you have to make any changes to your training task, what you can do. So what we, what we recommend if you see any bugs in the error or any bugs in the data, would actually just delete it and reassign the training task to them and making them fill it out with more complete information as the complete date is not required to be filled out. Some other training little, you know, um, troubleshooting tips that you can do is you can go into related, scroll down into audit history. And what this does, this shows you kind of the the records log, right? So should this have any had any logs before, it would tell you the created date, when it was created, who it was created by, and so on, which I can get into another, another record there. The other thing is you can see the responses. Should there be any responses in the exams? You can see any of the training that it's associated to, or if there are any other training tasks that it's related to, should there be multiple. Right. 
And then finally, the last thing you can do in the power apps as well, which we don't recommend because we do recommend doing everything through the portal, is if you go on the top here and hit other activities, you can then create a new training task through here. By hitting training task, creating a subject, employee course, and that will assign a training task to a user. Right. And then what we kind of have with the way the system's set up, and I'll talk about in two weeks, is we do have an employee job roles, and I'll quickly go into this, is if I open up, for example, um, Diane's, she is a operator three, if I open this up, what this tells me is that they have a training requirement, and this training requirement requires her to have this course vacation policy completed. So when we go into the vacation policy, what this does is it actually creates a training task from the course itself. All right, so this this course here has a training task, and then once I go back and once I assign that job role to the employee, they will have a training task, which you will see here, and they'll be able to complete it. This module is extremely you know, complicated, and hopefully in the next month or so when we go through our next two parts, we will be able to understand this completely, but for the time being, for the sake of part two, all you have to know is to navigate your training tasks. You can go into the training tasks on the left-hand sidebar and kind of filter through your employees, your courses, or whatever need be. Finally, we are going to talk about courses. So before we talk about courses, we'll go into course groups. And what this is, is that we will talk about what group does the course fall under, whether it's SCORM, quality, safety. And then from there, if we open up, just like the form types kind of uh, sit on the HSC side, and then if we go into courses, what we will then see is for all the courses, they're kind of defined by course group. So any of the driver certification is labeled here and kind of so on. So from there, if we open up one of these courses, it'll give us information about course group. Should there be a parent group? Should there be an exam if we need exams associated, whether if it's something like orientation, we probably don't have an exam, but if it's WMIS or any of the operator licenses, they probably have an exam associated. How many retries? Um, was there an institution giving the course or any accounts in your system? Um, are there any links you need to showcase as well? Description. And on the right hand side here, what you can do is you can say what kind of course this is, whether it's third party taught internally or taught by a customer. How valid is the course? So when somebody completes it, how often do they have to research themselves? How long should the course take them? Are there any credits and is there a cost? Right, so these fields are all optional. However, these two are highly recommended that they be filled out, especially if it is a um, reoccurring training, reoccurring course. From there we go into related and then we can see a couple more things. Are there any classes associated to this course? Are there any forms associated to this course? Are there any training child, training parents, training requirements like I mentioned? So all of these job roles that exist, these have training requirements associated, which I'll get into a couple of weeks. And um, same idea, are there any training tasks associated with this outstanding course? So if we go from the Alberta Class 1 Operators License course, we can see that Shilpa, Rendon, and Support Neo Systems have all done training tasks in this, um, um, in regards to this course. Then we can see if it's all, or if it's closed and so on. These views can also be customized um, should they need be, and we'll, that just goes back to our advanced find and um, system views YouTube video. So those are the three main things that you need to know when setting up a, um, a, a training record. First thing is the training record itself. How does it sit in Power App? The next thing is training task, which once completed, will create that training record. And finally, the course, which is the template that the training record lives on. It's a bit convoluted, but as we go on through the next couple months here, we'll have a better grasp of the system. Make sure to follow us on LinkedIn at linkedin.com slash iTrack365. Follow us on YouTube, and should you have any questions, please message support at iTrack365.com. Thanks.